please welcome. She's been called the greatest comic of her generation. Combination of Jerry Seinfeld and Chris Rock. Please welcome to the stage, Julia Schrader. That's so unnecessary. Um, it's so great to be here with you tonight. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, welcome. Welcome to you. Welcome to me. Um, welcome to my final project for Organs and Meanings. Um, I'm going to be doing a little stand-up this evening. Or should I say sit down because I'm in a chair. It's a little taste of what you're in for <laughs> this evening. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing some jokes, talking about some science. Should be a lot of fun. Um, and welcome to my childhood bedroom, um, which has now been converted into a guest room, and which is not traumatic for me at all. Ah, speaking of trauma, um, as we all know, this has been a really crazy year for everyone. Between COVID, the election, the country's general descent into chaos, I haven't had a moment to catch my breath. And for me, that's been especially difficult since I actually contracted COVID in March and I haven't been able to walk three blocks without sounding like a Muppet since. So I've just been walking, walking, you know. <sighs> so that's my life now. Um, it is what it is. But one of the crazier things that I've been dealing with this year has been online college. I'm currently a senior at Columbia, and I was expecting great things for this year. You know, getting drunk every night and grinding on alma mater, living in EC, the pinnacle of New York City luxury housing, and finally learning how to fence my childhood dream for the PE requirement. And obviously none of these things have happened, although I am more familiar with Alma's crotch now than I was at the beginning of the semester. You don't need to know. Like many other people though, I've had to adapt my expectations for what this year looks like. But it's fine, it hasn't been all bad. I took a class called Origins and Meanings this semester that really opened my mind up to a lot of different concepts about consciousness and physics and time and space. The biggest revelation, free will doesn't exist. The only problem was that the class took place from two to five on Friday afternoons over Zoom. I don't know about you, but I usually spend my Fridays in a hungover stupor. Maybe around 3 p.m. if I'm feeling really adventurous, I'll force my way out of bed and go buy a bagel. On Fridays, my attention span is so low that sitting through a minute long TikTok is too much effort. And beyond this, there are no other classes at Columbia that are three hours long. My brain has not been trained to sit through three hours of class. I once had a professor who, if anyone dared to look at the clock, he would stare them straight in the eyes and he would say, I know your pea-sized mortal brain does not have the attention capacity to hold more than 40 minutes of discourse, but we're here for another 45, so get it together and get your eyes straight to the front of the room. Wow. Wow. I'm not sure if he was implying he was not mortal on purpose, but I will say that his forehead was so big, it's really possible he could have been related to E.T. Who knows? Not really for me to say. But the point is, if I'm taking a three hour long class on a Friday afternoon, it really does have to be exceptional. I do think origins and meanings fit that criteria. This is a class I was taking for my science requirement, and it's in the physics department, which is very unexpected for anyone who knows me. I'm someone who is so science averse that in my senior year of high school, instead of taking physics like everyone else, I decided not to take a science class and instead to take two English classes so that I could flex on the class with my knowledge of iambic pentameter twice in a day instead of just once. Obviously, as you can tell, I was really cool in high school. You know, over the summer, I told my parents I was taking a physics class this semester. They actually laughed. Then they said, 
get back into quarantine because one of the symptoms of COVID is self-delusion. But you don't do science, but you're writing a thesis on Shakespeare. I mean, they're right, they're right. I really don't do science. And you'll notice that so far in this final project for my Origins and Meanings science class, I have not mentioned a specific scientific concept once because I didn't understand any of them. We were out here talking about black holes, general relativity, Einstein, Darwin, and the whole time I was just thinking, I wonder how tall Brian Greene is. He looks kind of short, but is that just the zoom height illusion at work? Is he a vegan? Most vegans are pretty short, right? You know, I watched one of his TED Talks after and I found out my answer. Short King. Have to respect it. <laughs> um, luckily for me though, uh, the class was really only masquerading as a science class because we spent most of our time talking about philosophy and watching movies. And I've never been in a class where we watch so many good, emphasis on good, movies. So to name a few, we watched The Matrix, Inception, Fight Club, Shawshank Redemption, and my former favorite movie that I can't like anymore because of Kevin Spacey, American Beauty. All these movies were supposed to illustrate different concepts we were talking about in class. So The Matrix, uh, they're in a simulation, and it turns out that we're probably in a simulation too, so that made sense. And Inception talks about the nature of consciousness and reality. And that all really fit with what we were doing in class. But some of them, I think Brian Greene just put in because he liked them. Like we watched A Streetcar Named Desire the week we were talking about language processing. And I think it's really fun to hear Marlon Brando screaming, Blanche, Blanche. But it's not really related to anything we were talking about. I wasn't going to complain, though, because I definitely would rather watch movies and actually learn physics. Because as you know, I don't really do science. But it's funny. I mean, this class has seeped into other aspects of my life. I think about it. Um, the other day, I was watching the new Christopher Nolan film, Tenet, and I was like, wow, I wonder what Brian Greene would think about all of this parallel timeline stuff. Like theoretically, it could happen because it's not breaking any of the laws of physics. And as we know, something that happens forward can always happen back. Fuck, he got me. I learned something. And to be fair, I did learn a lot in that class. I personally like to think about physics in more layman terms that I can understand. So like every time we were talking about a new physics concept, general relativity, special relativity, quantum mechanics, I would envision the implications on this concept for a piece of macaroni. So like when we're talking about black holes, we learned that they are these supermassive objects and that when an object turns into a black hole, its size is drastically reduced. So if the earth turned into a black hole, its radius would only be a centimeter long, which is crazy. I did some calculations of my own to try to get an idea of what this actually would look like. And what I found was that 100 billion pounds of macaroni would equal a black hole with a 6.7 times 10 to the negative 14th millimeter radius. And that's nothing. That's a speck. That's smaller than a speck. Um, I also thought about... If we assume that each box of macaroni roughly equals one pound, that equals a fuck ton of macaroni just poof, gone, vanished from this world. To me, that is the greatest tragedy of all. One final thought about black holes and macaroni. Um, if a black hole was made out of macaroni, would we call it an orange hole? I think these are the important questions uh, science needs to be investigating. You can also think about evolution in terms of macaroni. So we started out with plain pasta. Eventually we thought, hey, let's sprinkle a little cheese on it. That might be good. And yeah, this satisfied our taste buds better. It was more delicious. 
So similarly to how Darwinism preserves the best traits in a species through natural selection, we selected to put cheese on our pasta more of the time. And eventually we started making powdered cheese and putting it in a box, which is more convenient and also more delicious. And we as a society evolved to actually prefer box mac and cheese. I mean, the health benefits aren't there, but our taste buds were displaying a version of Darwinism through this whole process. It really became clear that we are the superior species when we figured out how to turn powder into cheese. What's next? Iron to gold? The implications of macaroni science are huge. So as you can see from that last section, which was meant to display my scientific learning, I really did learn a lot in this class. Um, and I now feel like I'm qualified to appear at the World Science Festival, or at least on Stephen Colbert. And while I might not be as smart as Brian Greene, at least I'm taller. But I have to say, uh, for someone who doesn't do science, I really enjoyed and got a lot out of this class. It's honestly been a wonderful experience, and clearly some of it has stuck. Thanks so much for a great semester, and good night. Thank you.